It's very cold. <laughs> this is where things took a turn. Tomorrow, my dad and I are going to be climbing Penavan, which is the highest peak in South Wales. No big deal, right? I mean, we've done that before. Literally everyone who lives in this area has done that before. I mean, just look at people's Facebook profiles. Everyone's profile picture is them at the top of Penavan. But we're going to be climbing it in time to watch the sunrise from the top. Or at least... That's the goal. That means we're gonna be leaving the house at 3.15 in the morning. That's not even morning, that is still very much the middle of the night. <laughs> we're trying to set everything up right now so that we're ready to go. We've got a little bit of a packed lunch. We got these head torches from Amazon because obviously when we are climbing up, it is going to be pitch black. Ooh. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. I love a walk, okay? I go for my daily one mile walk. Sometimes I'll feel a little bit adventurous and I'll do a coastal path or even sometimes a mountain walk. I don't know that I am physically or mentally prepared to get up in the middle of the night, drive to the Brecon Beacons and climb to the highest point in South Wales. But I'm gonna do it. not the kind of camera that you can film stars on. It looks like there are no stars. Oh, can you aim your light towards me, please? Oh, thank you. So we're just starting our crazy walk in the middle of the night. You can't see it because my camera's not good enough, but the sky is filled with stars. I haven't seen this many stars since I was in the desert in Jordan. And actually, this is a bucket list item for me. I've for years wanted to come out to Brecon in the middle of the night and just come and look at the stars. If only we were just here to look at stars and not to climb a mountain. But we power on. What are you? It's a mouse. He's probably like, what are you idiots doing up here at this time? <laughs> where things took a turn. It turns out that even with the backpack full of supplies that we brought with us, we were not properly prepared. Not even close. Like I said, we'd already climbed Penavan once before, albeit that was many years ago and I don't really even remember it, but it's not a major hike. Yes, some parts of it are very steep. Yes, my butt was feeling the burn. And yes, you do have to have a certain fitness level to be able to get to the top. But what I'm saying is, it's not like climbing Everest. It's a relatively short walk. You can do the whole thing in a couple of hours and pretty much everybody does it. It's something you can go and do of an afternoon. And I think for that reason, because it is so accessible and it doesn't feel like a big major hike for like hikey people, a lot of us, including myself, apparently, underestimate how serious it is once you get to the top. I had laid up according to the weather forecast for the day and for most of the walk I was feeling really nice and toasty, but then as you get towards the top you hit this ridge and it's like entering an entirely different world. Because of the positioning, I guess, of the hills on either side, it's like a wind tunnel and the wind hits you with such force and it is Oh cold! And then once you get up to the top, the wind hits even stronger. We actually got to the top an hour earlier than we needed to because we didn't think we were going to be able to climb it that fast. Like, shout out to us, I guess we're way fitter than we thought, but that was detrimental to us because it also meant that we had to stand at the top in this biting wind, not moving, not like warming ourselves up by climbing, just standing and waiting for the sun to rise. While we were up there, two other groups came to the top, tried to wait for the sunrise, and ended up giving up and heading back down because they also 
were not prepared for how freaking cold it was. It was really hard to vlog at the top, that's why I, I had this idea that I was going to take so much vlog footage and I was really going to share the experience with you, but I was shaking so much that my camera it just couldn't focus. And then we got to this point where we were like, hey, we've massively messed up. We need to head back down now. We did it. We got here at just the right time because look how misty it is now. You really can't see anything at all. So technically we didn't see sunrises and sunrise is meant to be in another 10 minutes. But we saw it go from dark to light. So I would consider that sunrise. We didn't see the actual sun, I guess, but we saw the light on the horizon. Wait, is that it? Just as we were heading back down, and we were like, okay, we've kind of seen enough, we decided right at the last minute to turn around and go back, and we saw the sun rise. And now I can officially say that I know the difference between it just getting lighter and the actual sun rising. <laughs> but man, it was cold. Like, very cold. We got up this mountain so much more quickly than we had anticipated. We thought it would take us about an hour and a half. I wanted it in an hour. So that meant we had all this extra time just waiting at the top for the sun to come up. And the wind was insane. It was so cold. And then the mist came in. Like, I'm struggling even to speak right now because my entire face is down. I wish I had brought like a bigger, thick jacket. But for the rest of the walk, like most of this walk, it's been not warm, but you know, fine. It hasn't been cold at all because we've been walking. It's uphill. It's not windy further down. But then when you get to that top, oh my gosh, look how red my nose is. I mean, we made it to the top, we saw the sunrise, we did not freeze to death, and I feel like I've learned a really valuable lesson from all of this. You don't know what you don't know. I read a few blog posts, I looked at the National Trust website, and I tried to get, I guess, the basic information, like what's the weather gonna be like, what time is the sunrise, how long is it gonna take us to get there, where the heck do we park? But I wish I had done some more in-depth research from like people who know what they're talking about actual professional hikers who would have said hey even if it's sunny take a big coat and gloves because it's really freaking cold and that has really taught me that when i'm trying something new that i have no experience in i really need to like stop and research what the heck i'm getting myself into speaking of doing crazy things i already have my next big adventure planned i'm going skydiving it's a 15 thousand foot skydive which is the highest you can legally go in the uk when i was booking it the guy was like hey do you want to do 10 or do you want to do 15 and i was like what's another 5,000 feet if you're already going 10 and then i got off the phone and i was like what the heck have you just done i'm so terrified but i'm doing it to raise money for a local children's hospice called tea haven and this this is such an incredible cause. They offer care, support, fun times, memories, laughter for children with life shortening conditions. It's such an incredible place and I just can't stress to you enough what a huge impact they have on families. And I know this because my family have had first-hand experience. It's really sad when you, oh my gosh, when someone you love as a little child is given this horrific news, you know? But then to have a place that is dedicated to making them feel special and loved and cared for, and not just the children, the family as well. Like, they, they support siblings, they support parents. It's just incredible. Anyway, my goal is to raise a thousand pound for Tea Haven, which is a, a, it's a lot. But if everyone who watched this video just gave one pound, then that would we'd be quids in. So I'm going to leave a link down below where you can go and sponsor me on my 15,000
thousand foot skydive like if that's not worth a pound of your money I don't know what is I'm gonna be screaming like a baby whatever you can give it is so greatly appreciated thank you so much and also thank you for joining me on this adventure remember that you are enough just as you are I love you so much and I will see you next time bye There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd know